Let's get some more on the state of the U.S. economy. I'm joined now by Peter Dixon, Global Equities Economist for Commerce Bank. Thanks very much indeed for coming into the studio this morning to talk to us. Um, all the economic data seems a little bit depressing that's coming out of the U.S. right now. Um, and we're also hearing these calls uh, for the Fed to get back into the bond market. Can you see that happening? Well, I think the data that's coming out of the U.S., as you said, has not been fantastic, but it's not a disaster area. I think we've got to bear that in mind. And I think that's the message which uh, Mr. Bernanke is uh, trying to uh, you know, portray to us. Um, you know, if the Fed is to go back into the market, I think we'd have to see an awful lot more weak numbers coming out of the U.S. We'd have to see further declines in jobs. We'd have to start to see retail sales and output going into reverse. Mm -hmm. And we're, no, we're by no means at that stage yet. So I think we're a long way off from the Fed having to uh, press the panic button once again. Right. And so you think these calls, uh, concerns about a double dip recession, are a little bit overplayed at the moment, do you? They are somewhat overblown, yes. I mean, if you think back, the only time that we've ever had a, a double dip in the U.S. was back in 1981. Mm -hmm. And that was a case by the uh, Federal Reserve hiking rates massively in order to squeeze inflation. Right. We've got no inflation at the moment. The economy may slow, sure, but that's uh, far from saying we're, we're going to get a double dip. Now, very often the, uh, when there has been a recession in the US, they've come out of it really quickly, um, very strongly. That's not really happening this time. Is that because of consumers? Um, well, I think primarily it's because we've got consumers rebalancing, we've got banks trying to get back on their feet, and all the, all the liquidity which has been pumped into the system isn't being given by the banks back to the consumers and, and, and the business sector. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically what's happened is that we've had the deepest shock, or the sharpest shock to the system in 80 years, uh, and you can't expect a normal, whatever that means, recovery mm -hmm. to, to set in very quickly. So it's going to take some time. There does seem to be a disconnect, doesn't there, between the data that is coming out from uh, the, the government and also what we've seen as, you know, quite sturdy earnings. I mean, it all looked quite positive on the earnings front, what we heard uh, from the US. Yeah, I mean, the earnings have been great. I mean, you've got to bear in mind, of course, that uh, corporate America has uh, clamped down on its costs quite significantly over the course of the past uh, two years or thereabouts. Is which that one of the reasons helped. it's better than the European? I certainly earnings. think that's one of, the, one of the key reasons, yes. It's obviously benefiting as well from the, the recent weakness of the dollar. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you, if you listen to what uh, corporate America is telling us, they're saying, well, 2011 is going to be an OK year, probably a lot better than the market currently fear so that's another reason I think to be fairly um, fairly sort of sanguine about the prospects for the US you talk about cost cutting and that's obviously uh, have it manifested itself in the fact that the unemployment levels aren't aren't good at all in the US and this is being touted as a I hate the phrase but a jobless recovery which means an awful lot of people are still going through that painful process of being laid off where they're not able to find jobs what impact does that have well, first of all, this, this issue for jobless recovery, we seem to have it after every recession. Um, I think it's fair to say that the, 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 it always takes a lot longer for em employment numbers to feed through uh, mm -hmm. following the recovery in the economy. So I think the jury's still out. Bear in mind the private sector is actually creating jobs. I think Friday's numbers will show that we had another small increase in the private sector. Mm -hmm. So um, it does mean, however, that uh, consumer sentiment will remain a little bit more depressed than we'd like to see. Mm. Uh, but I think, as you pointed out before, the U.S. economy does tend to rebound quite quickly, and I'm pretty sure that on, the, on a one to one year to eighteen month horizon, we'll probably see stronger job numbers than many people currently expect. Now, if the economy is slowing but not really in danger of a double dip, what effect does that have on the rest of the world? Well, I think it means that for the big exporters, the likes of China, the likes of Germany. Uh, they're going to find they're going a lot tougher because, after all, they are dependent upon the U.S. consumer to pull them out of the mire. Mm. Um, the U.S. consumer is, you know, they're, they're not dead, but they're certainly having a bit of a pause. Mm. Uh, and I think what it means is that global growth will probably uh, take a little bit longer to, to pick up to the pre-recession uh, rates than uh, we, we currently expect. Mm. Now, we've also been looking at the midterm elections in the U.S. Do you think that we're going to see a little bit of paralysis as, uh, as we build up to those? Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a case of the administration is going to try and do everything it can to ensure that the, uh, the Democrats um, maintain a, a reasonably healthy position after the midterms. Um, I think that the real problem is what happens after the midterms. If we get a, a Republican-dominated uh, Senate, then that could mean real paralysis after the elections as the, uh, as the president's uh, agenda runs into the sand. So I think that's the real concern. Okay. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today.